and welcome to another edition of Your Voice, Your Future. I'm Armstrong Williams. A group of Jewish students recently met with University of Virginia leaders asking them to do more to address anti-Semitism on campus. Mm, sounds familiar? Meanwhile, pro-Palestine student groups are calling on UVA to divest from all companies with ties to Israel. Reporter Nick Minock shows us why both groups are unhappy with UVA's response. As the conflict between Israel and Gaza continues, so does unrest at the University of Virginia. A student election is being held at UVA, calling on the university's endowment to divest from all companies with ties to Israel. The referendum also criticizes UVA's October 11th message that acknowledged the October 7th Hamas terrorist attacks on Israel. The referendum says UVA's message, quote, failed to address the crimes committed by the Israeli government and the ongoing going ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people, unquote. Students for Justice in Palestine is among the sponsors of the referendum at UVA, which has led similar divest efforts at colleges and universities across the country, including the University of Michigan, the University of Houston, Fresno State University, the University of Minnesota, and Brown University. This, you know, uh, movement on campus uh, that that is just blatantly anti-Semitic. Joel Need and Jewish students recently met with UVA administrators asking them to do more to address anti-Semitism. There are students that have been spat upon, shoved, um, that have been called, uh, you know, you know, sort of horrible names, names, uh, you know, sort of anti-Semitic slurs. Tragically, there's one kid that has been so um, intimidated by students in his dorm that for his peace of mind, he has to move off campus and sleep elsewhere and, and stop wearing his yarmulke. Uh, other kids uh, say when they walk by uh, these protests, they, they feel like they need to tuck their, um, their jewelry, their Jewish stars into their sweaters or shirts so that no one sees them. So, so they're hiding, uh, they're hiding their identity. And that's not all he's concerned about at UVA. Well, 70 faculty members signed a letter that, among other things, said that what happened on October 7th needs to be viewed in context. And I don't, I don't know how anybody can try to contextualize what happened on October 7th other than just looking at what it was. It was, it was a barbaric, horrible attack with no justification. So you've got all of these things happening and the administration just, just, doing, just not doing anything. A UVA spokesperson said UVA has strongly condemned anti-Semitism and Islamophobia and that UVA created a task force on religious diversity and belonging to make suggestions for where the university can improve. Students for Justice in Palestine have been banned by some colleges, including Columbia and Brandeis. We reached out to SJP for an interview. They have not responded yet. I'm Nick Minock reporting. Thank you, Nick. Thomas O'Neill is joining us. He's Jefferson Council's co-founder, and he has been following this issue. Exactly who are the Students for Justice in Palestine, and how are they funded? Uh, they're a national group, or one of, I think, 163 chapters. Funding is a little mysterious. We're not sure. Um, I'm part of this group, as you know, called the Jefferson Council, and that's one of the issues we're facing. But we have met with a lot of the Jewish students and know particularly the parents who uh, met with President Ryan and others. And believe me, it's as bad, every bit as bad as what's going on at the Ivy League schools. But these, this organization has been banned on other prominent campuses. Correct. Why? For precisely what they're doing. Uh, what is it they're actually doing? Well, they had two demonstrations, one right after, the week after the invasion, uh, one in December. Uh, they're violating the Commonwealth law about wearing a mask. That dates back to the KKK. So for that alone, they should be banned. Uh, they also were openly not just supporting a Palestinian state, but supporting Hamas, which has been redesignated, as you know, as a terrorist organization. Uh, my two cents, they should be disbanded for that, or at least reprimanded, and they're allowed to continue. But regarding what your reporter just said, uh, we know for a fact, because we've spoken to some of these students, it's not just verbal harassment. Uh, one student in particular, I'll leave unnamed, uh, walked, just didn't say anything, walked by one of their uh, tables, Armstrong, and was spit upon which is a felony. And that's what they relayed to President Ryan. We're hoping, they're hoping, that 
he does something concrete and doesn't just spew out platitudes. But so far, nothing's been done. But why allow a hostile environment on any campus where students are there to learn? You spit on someone. What do you, what do you hope to accomplish by spitting, disrespecting, singling out people because of their faith, mm -hmm. or because of their religion? What, is, what, is, what, what does it accomplish? Well, in the absence of action to prevent it, you have to assume they don't, don't disagree with it. That's my conclusion. The university? Uh, maybe that's harsh, <laughs> but th this is not speculation. It's concrete. There are videos of this. Well, I, I would assume with the kind of money that any parent mm -hmm. is paying for a child's education at UVA, mm -hmm. this is the last thing they would expect Absolutely. in that learning environment. In-state is about 38000 Out-of-state, all-in, is over $80,000. We're, we're as costly as the Ivies. And, but cost aside, it shouldn't matter. It could be a community college. It shouldn't be tolerated in an academic environment, as you know. But how do we get to this place? Because we, we hear, and, and, and Dominique um, is going to be joining us in this conversation. He's a regular former law enforcement official and talk show host in Chicago. Um, uh, Izzo will be joining us. How does this thrive? How, how is it in America? And I understand the freedom of speech, but you have to have respected speech. You cannot disrupt or threaten someone's life. Why does this continue? And the, and the UVA is probably the last person that you, last place that you would think that something like this could gain root. You would think our, our group has formed some individuals, and I were up to about 3,500 members in September of 2020. And exactly to your point, a student posted on the law on a sign, F-U-V-A, spelled out and some other profane things. That was deemed to be by the administration protected First Amendment speech. It isn't. The lawn built by Jefferson is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, 23 in America, it's like the Taj Mahal. I don't think you could put F Mahatma Gandhi on the Taj Mahal. They wouldn't allow it. He allowed it, and the sign didn't come down for four months, and that was the first sign. So if you tolerate that, it's a logical extension that what's happening to these kids, if you don't disagree, that they're, you know, you may not support Hamas, but you cer certainly shouldn't be supporting a group that does and is terrorizing students. I, I wonder what UVA's position would be if they had that same sign and changed it in then to say the LBGTQ community or the African American community, sure. if they're using such profane language. <clears throat> I wonder what would their attitude be to say? Would they also say? That is free speech, and that's, those signs would have stayed up for four or five months? I doubt it, and your, your reporter was spot on. Uh, they, they condemn Islamophobia. Islamophobia does not exist at UVA. There's not been one incident of Islamophobia. You can't set up a supposedly bipartisan group to condemn anti-Semitism and Islamophobia when only one exists. So to your, your question, of course it wouldn't be, it, nor should it be. It, it should be condemned immediately. So why is it <clears throat> that the university leadership allows to stop a stand. Well, to be fair, the, the parents met February 14th. They laid all this out. They now have the proof. But we're three, two weeks later. Um, what I don't understand, Armstrong, is they know who did it, these students for justice in Palestine. If I were the president, the next morning I would have gone to the head of the students in justice in Palestine, said, okay, who is it who did this? Who's harassing people? Who's spitting on people? Uh, you can't wear masks. It's a violation of Commonwealth law. You will stop immediately. Or you'll be suspended or expelled. Are they wearing masks because they don't want their identity known? Ex exactly. Yes. But you could easily find out who they are. Well, the, it's documented who they are. Uh, they, the, you, you, have to, you have to file to be the organization. The, the administration knows every member of that group. They don't know who did the spitting. But you can easily find that out. But there's an issue here with the lack of moral clarity. Yeah, I the, agree. the leadership of the university is failing, so these kids think they have, they're emboldened yep. to up the ante of what they're doing. If negative actions don't have consequences, they're perpetuated. And that's what's happening. Now, the administration might do something. Uh, the, the parents and students are waiting. But it's been two weeks. Uh, it shouldn't have been two days, in my opinion. But to be fair, they may take action, but no action has been taken since that meeting. So what is the role of the Jefferson Council in all this? This is a re well, this anti-Jewish thing is recent. We, we uh, there's a move to contextualize Thomas Jefferson, uh, maybe not eradicate him, but denigrate him. That's been going on. This Cavalier Daily, the student paper has been doing that. 
uh, conservative, moderate students who've spoken out are, to use the new term, doxed or gaslighted. Uh, we've defended those students. One, one young lady, I'll leave unnamed because it's a confidential situation, was falsely accused of a racial epithet. The EOCR group at Virginia, which opines on this, deemed it worthless. Or, uh, uh, the administration went to the, or the, uh, excuse me, the offense went to the student-run Judiciary Council who condemned her. This kid couldn't get a job. She had people threatening her life. She went to the then dean of students and the president asking for help, and it was not given to her. So she ended up suing the university, and we don't know the details, but we know the case was settled. That's probably, in my opinion, as a father of three girls, the most egregious thing. But, but why did we allow the anti-Semitism, the bigotry, right. the hate against anyone <clears throat> to continue on these university campuses? You shouldn't. <laughs> it's unconscionable. Well, and, who's and, making the decision, the decision not to shut it down? I, obviously, there is someone who can say, shut this down. Is it because of funding that's coming from some specific group mm -hmm. to the university? They don't want to offend or lose the money. It, is it because of someone has a different ideological perspective on this? But why is it that leader? Because it's clear to most people on the outside right. that this should never have gained any ground. You could just shut this up because you want an environment where kids are learning. It's already intense. They already have already many distractions. And that's one of the top universities in the country. Yep. Ultimately, it, the board can control it, but it's, it's not just at UVA. As you know, Armstrong, the boards of most of these, uh, it's just not meant as a pejorative comment, but they're kind of rubber stamps for the administration. Um, Governor Yunkin has appointed eight appointees to a seven person board. Uh, they'll have 13 in July, so his appointees will have a majority. Many of them, like me, have a business background, and the boards I sat on, and I've been on dozens. If the CEO of my why, company why was you, behaving why, like that, why do you, why do you need a board to tell you what's common sense? Oh no, I, I agree. You shouldn't. <laughs> and we'll be back on your voice in your future. Don't go away. You know, this is just a something that is totally um, mind-boggling when you think about what has happened since October 7th um, that a lot of these pro-Palestine groups have felt emboldened. I mean, this is what not this is not what peaceful protests are supposed to be about. And when you um, don't like certain things that go on campus, campuses, you don't further make other victims at the expense of something that you don't like. There's, there, there are normally procedures and processes in place to deal with this. Right. But it seems as though the leadership <clears throat> has just totally just shirked all responsibility and they're just offended, they're just afraid to offend anyone. Well, to specifically answer your question as to how could this happen, um, your, your reporter alluded to it. Uh, the Students for Justice in Palestine came out with a letter October 8th. It didn't just say we want a Palestinian state, it overtly supported the Hamas invasion uh, said that the genocide didn't happen, women weren't raped, people weren't killed, and that this was a result of Israeli colonization, which is just a factual lie. It isn't. You know, they claim the West Bank settlements are illegal. They're not. So over, I don't have the exact number, Armstrong, but it was like over 100 faculty co-signed that letter. So there's no other conclusion to make but that they agree with that, that the Hamas invasion of Israel was justified and therefore any response to that from the Israelis is morally indefensible. The facts are the exact opposite, <laughs> the exact opposite. So if the administration does not do anything about this, and I hope they do, but if they don't, what other conclusion can one make but that they side with Hamas and they don't have a problem with it? And I'm not saying that they're going to do that, but the meeting that was held two weeks ago was, I have a transcript of it, uh, was incredible. And the, it, there's, proof that these kids are being harassed. If nothing is done, a change has to be made because it's unconscionable. Is this a trend happening on these elite? Oh, yeah. At these elite universities? Yeah. We, we didn't know how bad it was until we started digging in in the fall of 2020. I can, I know we're part of a larger group called the Alumni Free Speech Alliance. Cornell, Princeton, Harvard, Washington, Lee. Same thing's happening in all those campuses. Top, top 24 uh, universities in the nation are part of it. Exactly the same thing is happening. So, is this organized? 
Are, are they testing just how far they can go with this? Uh, yes, <laughs> they are. Uh, academia has been co-opted. I mean, that's, that's my but, but opinion. Co-opted by whom? By an intolerant, monolithic far left. May, that may sound extreme, but that's, that's what's happened. So, I, I wouldn't tolerate that if conservatives were doing that. It, it wouldn't be correct. You have to have two, you have to have civility and divergent viewpoints talking in a civil manner. And that isn't happening right now. But why is it just that a, a select few certain segments are allowed to, to get away with this wherever? And there are no consequences. We had a, a quick aside, but it's key. We had a talk at UVA a couple weeks ago by Jonathan Haidt, if you know him. He, he was a teacher, a professor at UVA, now he's at NYU. Self-professed, very liberal. In 2015, he started a group called the Heterodox Academy, which is faculty. He said he'd never read a conservative entity until he read the National Review. He read that and his eyes opened. And now he realizes how intolerant a lot of his friends were. So he's a moderate liberal who's every bit as, as you and I are for open diversity in speech. The, the talk was amazing. And to hear a converted <laughs> liberal admit that was something. And, and we would not, I would not tolerate intolerance on the part of conservative students. My siblings that are liberal, you know, we're civil to each other. You, you hit the nail on the head. It's common sense. You, you love people. You treat them with respect. That isn't happening. But what is it doing for the education environment oh, it's killing of these it. universities? It's killing it. These kids are, these kids are being absolutely indoctrinated. I, two of our daughters went to UVA, and I, when I started asking them what happened, I had no clue until they started opening up. And, and interestingly, some faculty shut them down, but it's more the kids than the faculty. If you bring up a, a countervailing viewpoint in a class, and it's moderate or conservative, you're, you're attacked. But it's how, it's t and this isn't every class, don't get me wrong, but there's enough, there are enough incidents of that that it's reprehensible. And the kids are really almost worse than some of the faculty. But there, there must be instances where some universities are fighting back against this, and they're successful. Uh, I, I can't imagine universities without, with, with, with what's at stake here, just, just laying down and taking this without any, any fight. Well, so far they've been able to do it with impunity because you have a lot of wealthy donors who are oblivious to it. And they haven't, you know, Harvard's got a $55 billion endowment. They don't care. You, if somebody says, I'm going to stop giving you money, unless you're, you know, the most recent guy, Ackerman, they don't care. So people who are going to give hundreds of billions have to stand up because unfortunately money talks. UVA has not had anybody step up like that yet. So we're doing a grassroots effort trying to get students and faculty and, and parents, like these admirable Jewish parents, to meet it head on and meet with the president. But That's it's, what it's not enough for Jewish parents to No, no, stand I, I up. agree. It's for all parents to stand up. It, it I doesn't agree. matter wh where you give the money and why you give it, but you should stand up against this lack totally. of civility. It's violence disrespect, and you're creating a hostile environment for learning. Well, you, uh, outside of Jefferson Council, I'm organizing a group of uh, UVA alumni in, in, in mid-March to do exactly what you're saying. To my knowledge, and you may be aware of one, I'm not, I don't think any Christian alumni have stood up against what's happening. We're going to do that. It's going to be peaceful. It's going to be positive and proactive. But we hope to get a couple hundred people on the, on the lawn in the rotunda to speak up in supporting our Jewish students and supporting Israel. Um, we have to get a permit for that, and we're in the midst of trying to do that. But um, I totally agree with you. People, it's time for people to stand up. I, you know, my favorite quote, Armstrong, is Sir Edmund Burke. The only thing the need for evil to exist is good men to do nothing. Good men have to stand up and do something. You know, you know finally, uh, before we say goodbye to you, how have these kids become so indoctrinated, so blind to the whole story, the whole truth. You know, not once has anyone in the leadership of Hamas apologized right. for October 7th, 2023. Not once has Hamas given any indication that if Israel were to cease its annihilation, because that's what it is of right. Gaza, um, that they've <clears throat> learned anything. Right. They would continue the escalation. I mean, I mean, I mean, if you think about that, I mean, you just think about it. If you don't feel you've done anything wrong, and how can you not see the faults in Hamas and the fact um, that they killed hundreds and hundreds of people died, and they're still holding people hostages, but yet they get a pass. You don't even have feminists 
around the world speaking out against the rape. They speak right. out against everything else, the hypocrisy there. But you don't hear these feminist groups speaking out against it. Why? And, Why such a deep and silence? And putting Palestinian innocent citizens around their military sites. So when you take out the military sites, you're killing Palestinians. Well, you know, in, in an extreme Islamic environment, death for Allah is salvation. And that these guys are not mainline Muslims who are fine. They're extremists. But I'm talking about women's groups oh, around no, I, the world. I, here, I agree. Why? No, 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 totally. The rape. Oh, yeah. The decapitation of babies. Putting babies in ovens. Yes. Yeah. How Unbelievable. Could they, how, could not, how could they believe that this is propaganda? I'll, I'll, I know you got to run. I'll tell you this very quickly. Um, I joined social media to follow what kids are saying. Online, on X and on Reddit, there are kids who deny that happened. All you got to do is Google it. These guys, as you know, were, had their iPhones out. They were laughing about it. They deny it happened. They, th they think those tapes were manufactured. They're del self-delusional. So where are, they, where, are they get, where are they getting their information from? TikTok? What's their source that gives credibility to their position? Uh, some of these kids are literally from the Middle East, and I guess they're going to radical Muslim terrorist groups who are doctoring the truth. I, I don't know. I, I, I can't imagine, to your point, you may support a Palestinian state. It's a far cry from that to supporting Hamas. It's a fact. But it seems as though they have a more deeper, dark agenda. They seem oh, to know they're organized, they're funded, they know exactly what they're right. doing, and they know exactly what they're trying to achieve. Right. And the media, the mainstream media, just goes along. Right. Doesn't take them to task. Right. And hold them responsible for their actions. That's why we need more guys like you. I'm being serious. Well, you you got to shine a light on it. Listen. Uh, there are many lights that need to shine on it, but the most important light is the light that should shine from the university leadership. Totally agree. Because if they were to do their job, uh, none of this would be an issue today. It's just unfair to the students, no matter who they are, that they find themselves in this hostile environment and to make them believe that they've done something wrong and they should be punished and disrespected and create an environment where they just cannot learn. Well, there's a board meeting in a couple of days, and I hope to God they address this because the presidents there along with the provost who was in this meeting and the board's aware of the meeting how can they find out more about the Jefferson Council oh they know a lot about it they, they subscribe I'm talking about people watching tonight oh uh, is there I, a website oh absolutely yeah I, if you I, I'll I send it to Aaron I'll, I'll send you this and you can publish it you can publish it now what is the website okay it's oh you don't remember that's okay w, no no w, www the Jefferson Council at UVA com www the Jefferson Council at UVA for UVA excuse for, me dot for com. UVA yes dot com. www dot the Jefferson Council for UVA, UVA dot com. Com. but you, you hit Jefferson Council UVA in Google it's the first thing that pops up well thank you for well, your thank you your commitment and thank you so much for joining us uh, when we return the superintendent of the Oklahoma school system Ryan Walters and Kareem Nuri a uh, a teacher uh, and director at a private school will be joining us to talk about the state of education. I'm Armstrong Williams. Your voice, your future. We'll be back. Thank you.